dedicated for the Anglican Church to grow trees, and we thank uh, the Kenya Forest uh, Department, and we're working very, very closely with other regions so that we can be able to participate in uh, bettering the ecology and our environment. We have come together today uh, to celebrate this day, a 40 years journey, and actually that is my theme or the heading of my sermon, a 40 years journey in God's hands. 40 years journey in God's hands. 40 years, and the number 40 is very, very critical in the Bible, and I can mention a few. But let me say 40 years or 40 days, because it is mentioned 40 years or 40 days, is time long enough to stretch to the limits. Time long enough to stretch to the limits, either to break or to survive. When God was angry with humanity in the time of Noah, he poured the torrential rains for 40 days and 40 nights, and it ravaged the whole environment, and uh, destruction happened apart from Noah and his family who adhered to God's will, and they made uh, the Safina 40, 40 days. The children of Israel had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, a journey which could have taken them barely a month from Egypt to Palestine. They wandered for 40 years because of their disobedience and disbelief in the God who is leading them. So they were made to wander for 40 years, a moment of either breaking or hardening them. Moses went to the mountain to speak with God before he received the Ten Commandments to guide humanity, and he was away for 40 days and 40 nights. And the crowds downhill became impatient, and they began to say, he's forgotten us. He might have been killed by that God. Let us make our own God. So they began to create an image uh, as their own God because they cannot wait for 40 days. Time long enough to stretch to the limits. Jesus, before he began his ministry in Galilee, fasted for 40 days and 40 nights just before he descended to begin, to begin his ministry. The temptations were so intense, including hunger, where the devil tells him, now you have been hungry for 40 days. Why don't you turn these stones into bread and we see and believe you are the son of God? And he tried many means of breaking him because he knew 40 days was time long enough to stretch beyond the limits. And uh, Jesus triumphed with one thing, it is written. It is written. He survived with the word of God. And that's why the Bible says, life does not depend on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the word, the mouth of God. I want to base our, our celebratory message on the book of Deuteronomy, and I'll be looking at chapter 6 and uh, chapter 8, uh, not the whole, but the uh, sections, but I want to give the basis of the book of Deuteronomy. This book is a book that Moses written, uh, wrote when the 40 days are over of the wilderness. And the whole camp of Israel is now ready to get into the promised land. But he halted in the, you know, in the desert of Paran and gathered them and said, before you enter the land, I want to prepare you well. Because 40 years are over. You have been stretched beyond the limit, but a new beginning is dawning. And he wanted to prepare them how to survive the promised land after hardship and a hard moment. And I won't begin by what he said is most critical and important for their journey into the future. Chapter 6, verse 4 to 9, we read these words. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one, not two. You shall love the Lord your God with all your hearts, and with all your soul, 
and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign of your hand on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your foreheads and write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. The basis of our Christian faith is to experience the love of God and to reciprocate that very love by loving him. So the denominator is how do we define love? When the disciples were questioning Jesus about many things of his teachings and the kingdom, they asked one question, Lord, if all these ten commandments given by Moses become hard for us to believe in them and to keep them, which is the most important that if we keep that one, we shall be safe? And the Lord says, the one that summarizes the Ten Commandments, he drew from these words. Love your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your might. Then love your neighbor as you love yourself. So he says, love is the foundation of all other commandments. For if you love, you will not kill. If you love, you will not bear false witness. If you love, you'll care about your parents. If you love, you'll honor God. If you love, you will not harm others. So it becomes easier for one to keep the commandment if the driving force is love. And that's why the Bible says, love your God as yourself. And the Bible says, this is the basis. The Israelites developed this into a great theme which became their rallying call and they are called to worship, and they called it Shema. Shema in Hebrew is those words you announce so that people know who you are worshiping, like the way the Muslim uh, say aloud, Allahu Akbar. So the, the Jews used to cry aloud in their language and say, the Lord, our God, is one. I shall love my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my might. And I will also love my neighbors. So they were reminded as you get into the promised land, the way to go is the way of love. The way to thrive is through love, where you can all care for one another. For love is not the word that we say, it is the action that accompany, the care giving, the protection, the you know, uh, caring about today and tomorrow how we bring up our children. And the Bible says, when you have cared enough, then these words must be taught to generations to come. Your children, put them on the, on the wrist of their hands, put in their foreheads, talk to them when they go out, even when you are far away, talk about it. When you come in, when you lie down, when you rise up, fix on the doorsteps and put it in your gate so that people will know what God's teaching are all about. Chapter 8 of Deuteronomy, from verse 11. Now, he began to prepare a nation that was coming out of slavery, a nation that has never owned property, a nation that has never known freedom, a nation that has never known to manage their own public affairs. And he is now warning them that when you go to that land, be careful not to forget your God. And uh, because you know, Your Excellency, we have finished the first part of our service, including this reading, what has been read to people, but let me read now that you're here so that we hear what the Bible is telling us. Verse 11. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes. When I am commanding you today, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and lived in them, and when your hearts 
and your flock have multiplied, and your silver and your gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, and aided you through the arid wastelands with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water for, for you from a flint rock and fed you with manna in the wilderness and your ancestors. Humble yourself so that you do not exalt yourself and say, my power and my might or my own hands have gotten me this wealth and where I am. But remember the Lord your God. It is he who gives you power to get wealth, and he, he, it is he who enables you to confirm his covenant with you. What the word is asking us today is, in the moment we have, because we are all passing by, let us follow his commandments, let us work hard knowing it is the Lord who has given us what we have. It is the Lord who has walked the diocese of uh, Eldoret these 40 years. Whatever bishop you have, whatever has been created, whatever imagination has been, let our hearts never rise and think it is us who made it. If we send our minds back to the very beginnings of this diocese, when Bishop Alexander Kipsang Muge, the Lord rest his soul, began it. It covered the whole area up to Lodwa, Lokichogyo, all the way uh, to <coughs> West Pokot, uh, what is Nedore now, in Kitale, and uh, Wasingishu and Nandi. The diocese did not have resources but he had a great vision and great imaginations. When we read his history, he laid the first foundations of establishing churches, but also creating space for the church to thrive and grow. He bought a piece of land, which now uh, the Diocese of Kitali has, Bishop Muge. He was given the area now where we were in Kimalel, Pioneer, and he had imagination to grow a diocese with resources and where churches can thrive and grow. He did not live to accomplish, but he planted the seeds. Where Bishop Kawasis, when he came for 17 years, he built on the foundations laid by the late Bishop Muge. Those foundations became stronger, and when Bishop Kogo came, he established on them. And now, Bishop Ruto, you are carrying on. <clears throat> Through that history, what we have seen is a diocese that has grown from one stride to another. You gave birth first to Kitale. Kitale gave birth to Kapenguria Diocese. And now, Lodwa has also been set aside to become a diocese. And recently, uh, Kapsabet also became a diocese. If we put together, if we put together all that development of churches and the number of Christians and the multiplication that has happened, we can only say it is the Lord who has done it. The imagination of Bishop Alexander was not only in evangelism and creating churches. He also came with a robust social development program called CCS, Christian Community Services. Together with the late uh, Archbishop Gitari and the late Bishop Okulu, they attended that Delta course in South Africa. And they came and merged theology and development to be part of the mission agenda of the church. And through the Anglican Development Services, where we now, we now have ADS Northrift, we are able to respond to food security challenges, we are able to respond to health issues, we are able to respond to education issues, 
and other issues affecting humanity, including um, socioeconomic empowerment through the five talent programs that we run as a church. Therefore, the imagination of a church that responds to social, economic, and spiritual needs of the society was imagined then by the founders of this diocese. So what are we celebrating these 40 years? We are celebrating a diocese that are, is actively present in all those aspects, in environment protection, in uh, food security, in healthcare, in education, but in the spiritual formation of the community, uh, alongside also socioeconomic empowerment. We are celebrating a diocese that is also moving to develop <coughs> self-sustainability programs. Your Excellency, one of the projects we were praying for is a, a NACK plaza owned by Eldoret Diocese and Capsabet in the middle of Eldoret Town, a building that is come, coming up on a whole acre of land. It is now five stories building tall. The ground floor and the underground and the car parking uh, is, is complete. We commissioned that complete spaces. We also are able to bless uh, Bishop Mig Pioneer Estate uh, in Kimalel and other churches that we opened afresh. This is to propel the church to be self-sustaining in mission, but we are also imagining, and this is our great imagination, that the church in the West is diminishing. And soon, the West will need missionaries from Africa. And we are preparing ourselves to be the next missionary sending continent with our own resources grown locally so that we are able to do that. And Your Excellency, it's not a joke. We have now two missionaries in uh, Madagascar from Kenya. We have sent some by the Diocese of Mount Kenya South uh, in, in, in DRC. And uh, we have our first bishop in New Zealand, Bishop Maina, who is our missionary uh, and now our bishop in New Zealand. So it's not a joke. It is a <laughs> it's, it's becoming a reality. So we are celebrating milestones of the Diocese of uh, Eldoret. Bishop uh, Christopher, you are now steering the great development agenda. And when I worked with you these uh, few days, I said the diocese is now ready for an explosion. Because I can see it from how parishes are organized. I was in Kapsabet last month for five days. And I was also seeing an explosion in Kapsabet. We opened eight new churches, big ones in the rural communities. There was a, a moment when I was welcomed by uh, 862 lay leaders, all robbed in Kapsabet. I did not imagine that is the number the church has, has mobilized. When I was in Bere, I commissioned 1,672 uh, children brigade and uh, uh, girls and boys brigade. It is, it is imaginable to see those big crowds that the church is able to nurture with these very words of the Shema. The Lord our God is one. Love your God with all your soul, with all your might, with all your capacity. Today as we stand on the threshold of celebrating 40 years of the Diocese of Eldoret existence, we find ourselves in a field of faith, cultivating the seeds of God's word. Our journey is akin to that of a farmer, and I know this is a farming community. Sowing the seeds of the Shema, love your God with all your soul, all your might, all, your, all what you are, tilling the soil of our hearts and nurturing the growth of our spirituality. Just as a farmer carefully selects the best seeds for a bountiful harvest, we have chosen the Shema as a foundation of our faith for it is the purest and most fruitful seed. If we sow this seed, and we all love one another, then we shall have a loving community, a loving nation, a nation that will stand on the threshold of brotherhood and not divisions. In the words of Henry David Theriot, he said this, though I do not believe 
that a plant will spring up where no seed has been, I have great faith in a seed. Convince me that you have a seed there and I am prepared to expect wonders. Your Excellency, we want to plant that seed in this nation. The seed of love, the seed of unity, the seed of diversity that embraces each other. If we all plant this seed, we shall thrive as a people and as a community. Deuteronomy chapter 8 serves as, as a plow turning over the soil of our souls to refill both fertile ground and rocky patches. You know, in any, every field there is a fertile part and a rocky part. That is the reality of our situation. Just as a farmer must address the challenges of the land, we must also confront our own spiritual obstacles, such as hatred, because they cannot coexist with love, jealousy, and things that uh, divide us, for they cannot coexist with love. But as Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4 reminds us, the sluggard does no who does not plow in the autumn, he will seek at harvest and have nothing. We plow now, for our spiritual harvest depends on the efforts we put into the soil of our hearts. So as we celebrate 40 years, that 